Good morning, and welcome to our series, Fine Poetry, Poems That Touch Deeper Chords. Today, we begin part one of the poetry of Francis Thompson. Francis Thompson, 1859 to 1907, was an English poet and ascetic. After attending college, he moved to London to become a writer, but could only find menial work and became addicted to opium and was a street vagrant for years. A married couple read his poetry and rescued him, publishing his first book, Poems, in 1893. Thompson lived as an unbalanced invalid in Wales and at Storrington, but wrote three books of poetry with other works and essays before dying of tuberculosis in 1907. A lifetime of extreme poverty, ill health, and an addiction to opium took a heavy toll on Thompson, even though he found success in his last years. He would eventually die from tuberculosis at the age of 47. G. K. Chesterton said shortly after his death that with Francis Thompson we lost the greatest poetic energy since Browning. Among Thompson's devotees was the young J. R. R. Tolkien, who purchased a volume of Thompson's works in 1913-1914 and later said that it was an important influence on his own writing. To a Snowflake What heart could have thought you? Past our devisal, O filigree petal, fashioned so purely Fragilely, surely, from what paradisal, imagineless metal, too costly for cost? Who hammered you, wrought you, from Argentine vapor? God was my shaper. Passing surmisal, he hammered, he wrought me, from curled silver vapor to lust of his mind, thou couldst not have thought me. So purely, so palely, tinily, surely, mightily, frailly, insculped and embossed with his hammer of wind and his graver of frost. In no strange land, parentheses, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is within you. O world invisible, we view thee. O world intangible, we touch thee. O world unknowable, we know thee. Inapprehensible, we clutch thee. Does the fish soar to find the ocean? The eagle plunge to find the air? That we ask of the stars in motion, if they have rumor of thee there? 
not where the wheeling systems darken and our benumbed conceiving soars, the drift of pinions we would hearken break at our own clay-shuttered doors. The angels keep their ancient places, turn but a stone and start a wing. Tis ye, tis your estranged faces that miss the many splendid thing. But when so sad thou canst not sadder, cry, and upon thy so sore loss shall shine the traffic of Jacob's ladder, pitched betwixt heaven and Charing Cross. Yea, in the night, my soul, my daughter, cry, clinging to heaven by the hems, and lo, Christ walking on the water, not of Genesareth, but Thames. The Clouds' Swan Song There is a parable in the pathless cloud. There's prophecy in heaven. They did not lie. The Chaldee shepherds, sealed from the proud, to cheer the weighted heart that mates the seeing eye. A lonely man, oppressed with lonely ills, and all the glory fallen from my song, here do I walk among the windy hills. The wind and I keep both one monotoning tongue. Like gray clouds, one by one, my songs upsoar over my soul's cold peaks. And one by one, they loose their little rain and are no more. And whether well or ill, to tell me there is none. For tis an alien tongue of alien things, from all men's care, how miserably apart. Even my friends say, of what is this he sings? And barren is my song, and barren is my heart. For who can work unwitting his work's worth. Better, me seems, to know the work for naught. Turn my sick course back to the kindly earth and leave to ampler plumes the jetting tops of thought. And visitations that do often use, remote, unhappy, inauspicious sense of doom and poets widowed of their muse. And what dark can dark ended in me did commence. I thought of spirit wronged by mortal ills and my flesh rotting on my fate's dull stake, and how self-scorned they the bounty fills of others, and the bread even of their dearest take. I thought of Keats that died in perfect time, in predecease of his just sickening song of him that set, wrapped in his radiant rhyme, 
sun-like in sea. Life longer had been life too long. But I, exanimate of quick poesy, oh then, no more, but even a soulless course. Nay, my delight dies not. Tis I should be, her dead, a stringless harp on which she had no force. Of my wild lot, I thought, from place to place, Apollo's songbowed Scythian, I go on, making in all my home with pliant ways. But provident of change, putting forth root in none. Now, with starved brain, sick body, patience galled, with fardels even to wincing, from fair sky fell sudden little rain, scarce to be called a shower, which of the instant was gone wholly by. What cloud thus died, I saw not. Heaven was fair. Methinks my angel plucked my locks. I bowed my spirit, shamed, and looking in the air. Even so, I said, even so, my brother, the good cloud, it was a pilgrim on the fields of air. Its home was all where's the wind left it rest. And in a little forth again did fare, and in all places was a stranger and a guest. It harked all breaths of heaven and did obey with sweet peace their uncomprehended wills. It knew the eyes of stars which made no stay, and with the thunder walked upon the lonely hills. And from the subject earth it seemed to scorn. It drew the sustenance whereby it grew perfect in bosom for the married morn. And of his life and light, full as a maid kissed new. It's also darkness of the face withdrawn, and the long waiting for the little light. So long in life, so little. Like a fawn, it fled with tempest breathing hard at heel of flight. And having known full east, did not disdain to sit in shadow and oblivious cold, save what all loss doth of its loss retain. And who hath held hath somewhat that he still must hold. Write, poet, who thy rightness to approve, having all liberty, didst keep all measure, and with a firmament for ranging, move, but at the heavens, uncomprehended pleasure. With amplitude unchecked, how sweetly thou didst wear the ancient custom of the skies, and yoke of used prescription, and thence how find gay variety no license could devise. And we, the quested beauties, better wit, 
of the one grove our own, then forests great, restraint, by the delighted search of it, turns to right scope, for lovely, moving, intricate, is put to fair devising in the curb of ordered limit, and all changeful Hermes is terminus as well. Yet we perturb our souls for latitude, whose strength in bound and term is. How far am I from heavenly liberty, that play at policy with change and fate? Who should my soul from foreign broils keep free in the fast guarded frontiers of its single state. Could I face firm the is and with to be trust heaven, to heaven commit the deed and do in power contained, calm in infirmity, and fit myself to change with virtue ever new. Thou hadst not shamed me, cousin of the sky, thou wandering kinsman that didst sweetly live unnoted, and unnoted sweetly die, weeping more gracious song than any I can weave, which these gross-tissued words do sorely wrong. Thou hast taught me on powerlessness a power to make song wait on life, not life on song. To hold sweet, not too sweet, and bread for bread, though sour, by law to wander, to be strictly free, with tears ascended from the heart's sad sea. Ah, such a silver song to death could I sing. Pain would list, forgetting pain to be. And death would tarry marveling and forget to die.